you don't have to agree, mm -hmm. but you should still be able to show love. Yeah. You should yeah. still be able to show kindness. You should still be able to show humility. Mm -hmm. You should still be, you should still be able to show mm -hmm. what God said that you should show. Mm -hmm. if you so-called have the fruit of, of the, the spirit. spirit. Correct. 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 You should right. still know how to be gentle, meekness. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. You should still know how to do all those things. Yeah. yeah. And when you can't show that, and then you question whether someone whom you don't agree with is saved, you question whether someone whom you don't agree with, whether they really have the spirit. No, do you? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter. The truth is, you questioning my salvation does not heighten yours. Or mm -hmm. diminish yours. So why are you doing it? And it doesn't heighten or diminish mine because I don't it have... It doesn't. But I mean, the point of doing it is what? For the life of me, I still don't know what it does. Self-gratification. Because we're trying to always measure. And if I could diminish you, it makes me holier. And there's a deficiency I'm trying to feel. There's a void that I'm trying to feel by... When you are... When you... When... You are minding your business. You really don't mind about what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing over there. I've never even contemplated what they're doing because I'm busy working on me. It's only when you are you can't handle you, you start lashing out on them. Mm -hmm. When you don't like what you're doing, you can't face what you're doing, you got to pay mind over here. Mm -hmm. So in, in the course of healing, you own yourself. You, you appreciate yourself. You reevaluate yourself. That's the first step. And you release yourself. Because too many of us then get caught in a cycle of anger and bitterness of what they did. Yep. And we never resolve they hurt me, what they did 48 years ago, 22 years ago. And you're still, you can't walk in the place. You can't walk in, you can't hardly hear the name of that church, the name of that pastor, the name of that. And I'm not telling you that it does not hurt, but you're only healed when you can have the memory without feeling. Right. You're only healed when you can see that person walk through the door and your emotions don't go awry. When you can go back to the reunion and be okay. Even knowing that they still may not like you or accept you or feel appreciate your existence. That's not yours. You, your, your job is not to manage what they do. You're only responsible for you. So the very first thing is to be able to do all those self evaluations. Then number two, you got to go to the place. You do have to go to the place. I always use the John, I believe it's John 8 or John 9 model of, raising Jesus, of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Show me where you laid him. Because your healing is a collaboration with God. He doesn't do all the work. He's not magically coming down here erasing the pain. I don't care how much you cry and sweat. There's a part of it. It's a collaboration. He told them. Now he's God, Lord of all. He knows where Lazarus is. But he made them show me. Take me where he is. When he got there, you're still not done working. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Mm -hmm. He's God. You can roll away the stone. He can speak to it and let it roll. Why? What? what? You can make the, the stone disappear. Hello. Make him walk through the stone. You got all of these things, but you walk because there is a collaboration to your miracle of healing. Even after that, he calls Lazarus. Lazarus comes forth. And I love this part because this is because th we get through, if I could be like preacher ass, we, we shout and close the book. When Lazarus come forth walking like a natural man, right? He's at that, which is a lie. And I'll prove it to you. He didn't come out walking like no natural man. He did not. He had Let me tell you what. Some things. Because the Bible says he came bound, bound. still mm -hmm. in grave clothes. And Jesus did not lose him. He told the society, the community, loose him. And let him go. And sometimes we even get to the place that we are back, but we're still bound. We're still limited in our capacity. We're still not free.
to be our full authentic selves because we're ourselves in the way they buried us. We're still ourselves in their conformities. We're still ourselves on their program and format. But real freedom comes when you allow the person, you take off their expectations. He was dead, so this is what we do. But we're gonna break that cycle of what we do because your freedom is more than what we do. Your freedom is better than our articulated the theologies mm -hmm. and ideologies and understandings. They had never seen somebody who had suffered rigor mortis for being dead so long. Yep. Come back. Come back. Well, I mean, we, we've seen Jesus do somebody who just passed, touch him and come on right on back. But we're gonna have funerals and hired mourners. Hired them, because that's that's in the word. Hired mourners. And I don't want to don't do that. Because <laughs> I will go right down into these hired mourners in our lives. Some people are hired to do just that. To sit there and mourn a death that's not a death. You're trying to take me. But so so part of our healing is to walk that road, to go down, to do an understanding, do a, a reevaluation of our expectations of church. If you know, and this this now this this also I put this in the pot a soup because if you know that church is messy, why do you go there and, and expect less? Humans go to that church, so why do you expect angels to descend or ascend or abide? You see what I'm saying? It's about your expectations. Well, you have to take your onus of when I come here, there are going to be people who are here for ill reasons. They're going to have it. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's going to help you, as you say, know what church you're at, what building you're at, whether this really is a church or a cult. Yeah, because people need to assess the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta go there with your full go in, don't go in blind, as they say. You know, go in with your eyes open. What I will say is is that like I can I can really and truly only speak for myself. Coming out of Catholicism and entering into the black church, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know the ins and outs of Catholicism and what was really and truly going on behind the scenes as far right. as the good little choir boys and the nuns and all them children and that good orphanage, right? Yes. Like there were some things that we just did not openly discuss. Right. And there were some things that I absolutely was not allowed to partake in. Mm -hmm. Right. Then it was like, y'all gonna go, y'all gonna receive communion, you're gonna go to these little classes, you're gonna wear your veil, you're gonna marry Jesus. So that you can drink up this wine and you can eat up this bread, body, blood. We all uh -huh. know. Right. Just, it's a cracker and it's some real strong wine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Catholic church is strong. It ain't grape juice. Yeah. Yeah. And, er and everybody's sipping off that same cup. And for the life of me, I still don't understand whether they was actually disinfecting that cup with each wipe. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying. <laughs> We pray that that's been suspended for uh, COVID. We definitely pray. <laughs> right. Because they were sipping out the same cup. And I don't know if that napkin had alcohol on it. But anyway, but there was something, like I said, there were some things that I absolutely did not see. Right. And so me entering into the black church and now I'm seeing all of this stuff, not understanding it going to people and saying, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm experiencing. And them telling me, you'll understand sooner or later. We told you to enter in with your eyes open and be very careful. And now you're going to see some things that might not line up with what you think. Now, mind you being, cause I'm coming out of Catholicism, you know, so we study one thing, right? Mm -hmm. When we hear the priest give his little homily for 30 minutes and then he says, Sam, right? right. Coming into the black church where somebody might be preaching for two hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? right. And it, it's what they call a high service. Uh-huh. Right? And you're seeing people fall out, and I'm like, oh snap. Wow, what is this? Then 
you got people prophesying to you. You don't get prophecy in the Catholic Church. Uh huh. In the Roman Catholic Church, now might maybe in some other, right? Uh -huh. There are different there are different sectors of the Catholic Church. We know that. Uh huh. But in the Roman, wasn't nobody prophesying to you? You mean to tell me, just like this woman at the well, I can meet a man named Jesus through you who could tell me all about me? Uh -huh. Right? Uh huh. But what I didn't know was that a conversation had took place with somebody else who told you all my business. So then you said, oh, Holy Ghost dropped it. Uh huh. But I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Because to me, you came in the spirit of God and God revealed unto you who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now when you years later and your eyes begin to be open to a lot of the different inner workings and you begin to question some things and then you begin to study and understand prophecy you begin to understand word of knowledge you begin to right. understand right. all of these different things and you begin to realize oh, okay okay this might not have been the real life experience that i should have had in the first good uh 12 years of my coming to jesus moment right 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 then the Lord then has to remove you from everything. Because mm -hmm. that, that was my experience. The Lord literally had to remove me from everything that I knew. Even being married to a bishop. Because all that crap goes in quotations. And I don't care what anybody say. Folk, oh, you bitter. No, I'm not bitter. He's not a real bishop. And I don't care how many pieces of paper somebody gives him. He's not legitimate. Period. <laughs> so, bishop uh -huh. in, in the church doing church things and you begin to see all this stuff and God is like, no, I got to remove you. For two years, he had to remove me and begin to truly like transform me on the inside and say, daughter, you've experienced so much that was not me. Mm -hmm. Now I got to shape you. Now I got to mold you. Now I got to show you who I am. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to question things. Like I, I told you, I said last week, I made a good blatant statement and I meant what I said and I'm not taking it back. I said homosexuality is not a sin. I mm -hmm. said, and mm -hmm. I meant what I said. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I stand on what I said because mm -hmm. I'm an avid studier. I am a student of the gospel. I'm mm -hmm. not one that is just going to sit up here and say something without actually studying his word to understand why am I saying this? Right. We have so many people, like you said, because they were not taught to think. You mm -hmm. were taught to recite Mm -hmm. You were taught to basically regurgitate, but yes. you were not taught to think on your own. And me as a person that came into the black church as a thinker to then have my thinking way taken from me to then have to relearn how to think again. Because I came in a thinker. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this. Does it make sense to me? You don't question God. Mm -hmm. You don't question the word. And that's what we got. Mm hmm. And then you have a whole bunch of ignorant people running around here not questioning anything because, well, this is what it says. Do you not understand that there actually is a history of words? Right. Every single word has a beginning. Right. And if that word was not there from the beginning, therefore, that means something, ha something changed in mm -hmm. the midst of things. But we don't want to study we just want to regurgitate and then like you said we then want to manipulate and then mm -hmm. we want to control mm -hmm. and then we want to condemn and then we want to say you don't know what you're talking about right right you're unlearned you're not saved you're not delivered you don't have the holy ghost you're rebellious you no no you're a witch yeah yeah, yeah. You know how many times these folks have called me a witch i mm -hmm. said I I don't even know what I ain't got not a spell or uh, whatever whatever I ain't conjuring up nothing I don't even know I'm not I wouldn't even know how to do it but the fact let's be real like you said you received that word that you were gonna go outside and get hit by a bus uh huh that's a word of a witch is it not because that's a curse it is. But, but we don't want to acknowledge and call things what it actually is. Mm -hmm. We don't want to call, you know how many people I have heard tell me they better watch who they talking to because God is going to fit. Who? Do you not understand 
that that is actually a witchcraft prayer? Yeah. Yeah. That you just release the curse unto whoever because you feel that you're, I am high ranking in the spirit. What in the hell does that mean? <laughs> you know, especially when he says to the least of these. No, no, but we got all these high rankings in the spirit people. Mm -hmm. All of these master people. The Bible is very clear on who the master is. And it ain't never mentioned that none of these people that put master before their name. Mm -hmm. One master. So we, 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 and that's why I said, I'm going to have this topic. It's in the church. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is the church is a house of prayer. The church is a place of restoration. The church is a place of redemption. The church is a place of healing. The church is a place of love. However, we have a lot of imposterous churches yes. around here that do not exude what the Bible says the church should be. Yes. And we I have agree. to be aware as a people, where am I? And if this does not resemble what I am actually reading, now I need to do a self-reflection of myself to say, Lord, did you really leave me here? Is this your house? Right. Okay. Because guess what? I can see miracle signs and wonders all around me. That don't mean that those signs and wonders are being done by God. That's true. And I said something like maybe a few weeks ago. And I said, I said, when the church loses its sound, it has lost its purpose. Mm -hmm. And we as a people have to be very knowledgeable and we have to be very keen to the sound of the house. You can't tell me that your sound shifts just at the whim. All of a sudden, your whole purpose just changed. Now, all of a sudden, you're no longer a house of deliverance. You're no longer a house of prayer. You're no longer a house of praise. You're no, you're, you're no longer a house of redemption. You're no, no longer a house of, of restoration. You're, you're no longer none of that. You, I don't even know what you are. You something else. If you changed your sound, you've shifted your purpose. And therefore, I then have to literally look within myself to say, does my purpose fit in here? Correct. And a lot of times we don't do that. But then we also have we have a flip side to all of this as well, because we, we what 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 we have not discussed is we have a lot of sexual immorality in the church. Yes. And it's deeper than what all these folks want to call sexual immorality, because homosexuality. Is not that. Mm hmm. When you have a whole lot of molesters and pedophiles and rapists and people committing sexual assault on men and women. Mm -hmm. There was just, a, what, what was the story? The dude in, in, in Kalamazoo or wherever the heck he at that was paying the young boys to sleep with his wife, teenage boys. Oh, wow, I have heard that one. Yeah, I just, I saw the, um, the, the, um, I saw the, uh, the good article on it today and I said, I am disgusted. Oh my God. Right? We just had, like maybe last month, you had the, the whole high-ranking bishop out of that church in, um, in Chicago that just got brought up on charges mm -hmm. for years right. of molestation. Mm -hmm. Years. Mm -hmm. Years. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make you angry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the people knew what he was doing and covered it? Mm -hmm. And y'all yeah. want to sit behind these scriptures and say that the Lord told you to cut the devil is a liar. I don't know what God you serve that would tell you to cover that vileness. Uh huh. Yeah. But it falls into the psychological aspect of the mind. Manipulation. Mm hmm. And it it's is. twisted and it's demented and it's distorted because we truly live in a in this in this in this realm of truly a distorted reality. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand that this is not real. Mm -hmm. This is distorted. And then if you speak out against it, you're bashing the church. You're yeah. you're against God. Yeah. You know, I'm against injustice. Yeah. Just like Jesus was. Jesus was against injustice. But you can't recognize a true representative of Christ because mm -hmm. you're so conditioned to believe that when someone speaks out against injustice the same way Jesus did, mm -hmm. you're an infidel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did a, a live 
Um, there was, and, and there's no secret, because um, it was everywhere, um, the Kim Burrell situation where she was at her church, the pastor Kim Burrell, and she made her, her whatever whatever it was. And Real so, statement. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so my thing was, because um, everybody else did, I mean, as we all know, the end of that. Um, but my thing was, there were people saying that the person that published the video Trump. was wrong. That that couldn't been. A, I said, first of all, that's stupid. Let's let's just think about that. I said, it doesn't make actual cop. Even if I don't agree with your end, but your beginning to get to that end is still wrong because you're saying as if the person set out to harm her by publishing her. First of all, she was in her pulpit preaching the gospel. The gospel is supposed to go to everybody, and most of the people in the pews are the same recycled people that you just saw the last service. So they already know the gospel, right? right. So why would she? No, she don't. She doesn't know. I said. In fact, the part that that we captured was only, I think, maybe seven to ten minutes of an hour long message. Mm-hmm. She had taped the whole hour long. So how did she know? I need to cut it off right now. Right. And why should she? Because this is the safe gospel, right? So, right. And then my thing is, but if it's right, why is it hidden? Why should she not have? Put it out there. Because you can't tell me she got a, a, a separate class of saints that she got to minister a different type of way than the rest of us can hear. So, but the problem is we don't want to talk. We want to just shoo it under the rug. I have a friend that was talking about the pastor. There's a pastor that just died in Milwaukee, may, died this year is my understanding, that had a wife. The wife died maybe three years ago but had a mistress um, who was the wife's sister and they all were in the same church, had a child by the, had a child with the mistress and took the child and just said that the mother was unfit and took the child in and played as we're just raising this child as our own. No, it is yours, but the wife knew it all along because she had a boyfriend somewhere else so when the wife finally dies he finally can marry now mind you he had had the church by this woman because she was in need the mistress buy her a uh, a uh, uh, a van no put her over the van ministry bought the house took care of her as the church did because that's what the bible says to do that's what mm, that's what they say but did nobody but then told my friend that she was going to hell because she wore pants and went to a skating rink. You couldn't tell me that going to a skating rink was taking me to hell, but you could have this folly, embezzlement of funds, misappropriation of funds, adultery. I mean, your list is so long, how do you even have time to talk about somebody's pants? And but, go to a skating rink. But then the, the, the girl says she knew something, some of it, and told her mother, who was had nothing to do, she was just a, a missionary at the church, and the mama said, you shut your mouth. Shut up. You don't talk about the man of God. You let God deal with it. But this is what we classically grew up with because we didn't want to have these conversations. Because we didn't want to make people appropriate. We want to disturb. We don't want to be ostracized because we're the ones saying it. Now, I didn't know a lot of not saying stuff. So I will always ask questions. Like I always had a question mm-hmm. about the Sodom and Gomorrah thing when they taught it. And it wasn't even because I believed that gay was okay. It was the story didn't add up to me the way they taught it to me in Sunday school. They told me that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality. Yes. And, mm-hmm. you know, everybody just was, you know, yes, yes, yes. I have a question because that doesn't make sense to me. And I'm not mad at any of it. My question at seven, eight years old was, y'all also said in church, didn't y'all say that God does all things well and he ha- doesn't have to do anything? Because that, mm-hmm. that was the thing, right? If That's- God delivers you, he delivers you all. Oh. God's, you know, he's not doing partial work. He's not that type. Well, so he killed these people to rid the earth of homosexuality, but I was just told that it's here today and should be in me more or less. 
So did he fail then or is he failing now? Which 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 is the failure? Mm -hmm. Did he do it? Because he did it. Because you said this is his work. So which lie are we going to go with? And they couldn't answer me. I think they gave me like $3 and sent me to go get something. Probably told you to go get a damn ginger ale or something. Because yeah. you know what? But we don't want to talk about. And and until you come, you know, the, I do believe in the adage, God won't hear what you won't reveal. If you can't even bring it up it. to him, how does he, you tie his hands because you're wrestling. Now he can help. And I think this is what he has done to the church. Helped us realize the error of our way by yep. making it keep standing up over and over and over and over. But the error is the teaching, not the people. And that's the part that we're not fully understanding. We're not comprehending where the error is. So we want to yeah. say, you wrong. Yeah. You wrong. You going to hell. You, you, you. Yeah. We, we, we study with this, this, this finger right here. Right. But we don't want to acknowledge the fact that it, 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 it could quite possibly be the teaching that has been wrong, that has yeah. been in error. And the truth of the matter is, okay, when these folks really want to study the good word and actually uh, understand and know it, Sodom and Gomorrah had nothing to do with homosexuality. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. And do you know that's the very first scripture? Because I told you, God challenged me about gay being wrong. Because I told God that, that, was, that you know homosexuality is against your word. And he told me to prove it. And that was the first scripture I put. Because that's the classic story that we knew. And so when I pulled it out and he told me, God told me to read his word back to him and show him where he said that. And when I failed, I didn't stop there. Now, you know, I'm, I've never been. No, because we, we got to go through. We, we got to go through the so whole. I went through, I went through Leviticus. Leviticus. I went through, I went through, and, he still, and he told me to pull out all the stuff I had learned. First seminary. Corinthians. And then, so when I got through with that, then I went over to the, I said, that's fine, because it's in your word in the New Testament. I don't know why you take me through this exercise, but sure, we'll go there. And when he made me pull up where these words came from, what this actually meant how we it was misappropriated in us not talking about the word of god being wrong talking about our interpretation of what it said being um, wrong and it's literally right there it's not hidden you don't need god doesn't need to take you into a seance and a trance to say this word was etymologically meant this you can literally just research you don't have to have a degree you can literally just research and find out oh that's not what that means a feminine spirit, a uh, feminine spirit has nothing to do with a gay person. Uh, yes, it does. See, and these are the things, but this is what God had to challenge me on. And when he won, <laughs> my life was changed forever. But it still took some more because now it's been 31 years of a different doctrine. But this is where healing comes into play. Yeah. And I needed it. You know, this I is where healing, it. and like you said, you know, Healing will take place and then you will begin to have a release of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that release will come from also the release of the words that were spoken over. Yes. yes. Right. And we have to get to a place where we begin to heal from what was spoken. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know for myself, there are certain things like there are certain things that I literally still battle to this day. Like that I have a problem with to this day. Like there are certain things that are literally, and I recognize it as a trigger to me, not for the other person, for them to feel how I'm feeling, but for me to recognize that, okay, that triggered you. Why did that trigger you? And yes. let's deal with this trigger because what you don't want is to live a lifestyle of just being triggered constantly. Outside of bad spelling and grammar, that will always be a trigger that's not changing it. <laughs> I cannot deal with it. Oh. Folks need to learn how to proofread and write yes. clearly, okay, and correctly and accurately. I can't deal with it. However, yeah. the emotional triggers I have to begin to recognize. But that's that's self actualization and emotional mm -hmm. intelligence. Yeah, and that's what we lack even in leadership at the church. Yeah. What are your and in your gift? What prompts you? Because not each prophet is the same. No. What triggers you and makes you, you may be a, a, a political prophet, where when you see the wrongs in this particular arena, it brings up the God in you in the gifting, where somebody else may be social economic. And when you see it, devastation over there, it brings up the God. So what 
We don't have, this is the training that I'm talking about, to know what moves you so that you can be aware that when it comes, you already know this is what, this is the gift making room for us. Because how many rooms have we missed because we didn't know that that's our gift? That's the truth. Making room. Do you see what I'm saying? How mm -hmm. many times have we missed what God has for us? Because the gift pays. Now, let's be clear. Poverty is not part of the gift. No, it is not. You know what I'm saying? The gift pays, but you've missed some of your paychecks because you didn't know what your gift was and that it was time to step to the front. God told me one day, because I'm like, all these people running around with these titles, there's no new room for me. But so you'll take a back seat with an authentic gift so that a falsified one can go for it and the blood be on your hands still. But all of that is in the emotional intelligence, knowing, knowing who you are, being okay with who you are, the healing part. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we, we, we discount our church, ourselves because the Bible taught us to be humble, but the church abused humility. Yeah, not, not to stand up for yourself. Right. Turn the other cheek. Yes. That's, I, I, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. But who, who has made an impact doing that? Hmm? I, I, I don't know. I'll wait. You and me both, because I, I said I don't know. Who has been made some progress? Because even, even if you go with Martin Luther King, who may have been the peaceful, he still went and broke up um, marchings and sit down. He still disrupted regimented thoughts he did. and policies. Even it wasn't, he didn't go down and beat somebody and shoot somebody, but he still brought, even in nonviolence, a disruption and a rebellion against the standard. Against the standard and the system and the system yes. of, of oppression and yes. social injustice. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you sit here just talking about being humble and God's going to do it, yes, he is going to do it through you. Get Look, up. Get up and open up your mouth and start saying something. Who you waiting on? It's Ooh. you. If you got if you got the notion in your mind, didn't you think God can give you the courage to stand up and say it? And even if not, maybe you just start the first word and somebody else will pick it up. You don't know how it's gonna work, but that's not yours to figure out. Plant the seed, another let water, some waters, and God will come and God supply the increase. Give the increase. That's word. So you know, I, I think all of those things when you talk about healing. And it really starts with you being the more comfortable and accepted you become of yourself, the less others matter. And, and it's not even in a, a condescending way. It's, it's not. It's, it's in, I, in fact, because the truth is, the more you love yourself, the more you love others. That is the true. More, the yep. more you accept yourself, the more you accept others. That's the truth. The reason you're so nasty and bitter and ugly and is because that's how you feel about yourself. You hate your brokenness, your ugliness, your 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 indiscretions, your idiosyncrasies. You hate all of who you are. So you can't help but to hate all of who everybody else is and fight fault and judgment. Because right. you're not healed. So it's impossible to pour out what's not inside. So I can't expect you to be loving. You're not loving towards yourself. Hug you. Hug yourself. I want to hug. Go hug yourself. And I'm telling you, these are the greatest challenges David Glover had it with self. Was sanctified and could pray out demons in a 95 mile radius, but could not love myself. And you know, and sometimes people do not understand, right? They're like, well, was that all? Was that just your emotion when you were? Because people used to ask me that. Was that just your emotion while you were up there just praying? I was like, I do not think y'all fully understand that. If the Lord used me in the capacity in which he did use me in order to pray, in order to teach, in order to do all the things that I was doing, I was like, that was in his own strength, not mine. Yes. Because what Nakia was dealing with at home was something totally different that could not even be seen inside of a church. Because yeah. what Nakia was going through at home was called the Nakia to be up all night in yeah. prayer. Okay. Yeah. Nikia was waking up at the midnight hour, at the 3 a.m. hour, at the 6 a.m., and then still had to work and mm -hmm. then come into a church and cover all of this stuff that was going mm -hmm. on yeah. and pray for you. Yeah. And yeah. teach you. Yeah. And, and help you. Yeah. And your gifts and callings are without repentance. But even with, because, you know, I do, you know, 
because <laughs> because the good word says that you know gifts and call but when they said that they were literally referring to the gift and the call of israel being without repentance meaning god was not yeah. going to be remorseful for calling them but right? but it's the same with you or with us he's and not he's, res- he's not sorry yeah, he, he definitely is not sorry however he's not sorry we gotta be repentant Oh, no, no, no. Yes, I'm not talking about our repentance. I didn't mean that. Yeah, no, but a lot of people think that we, like, well, you know, yeah. So you mean to tell me you really think that I could sit up here and let, throw this out there. I could sit up here and molest young boys, but I'm still being called by God and that comes without repentance? No, no, no. I have to be repentant. Ah, per Nikia has to be repentant. Like I can't sit up here and cause harm to people. And oftentimes when that scripture is taught, it is taught in that way in order to tell somebody that, well, you know, you're okay. Yeah, and no, you are not. Are not. Yeah. No, I totally get that. But I'm talking about we have we at times well, no, I get what you we think. have to we have to be, you know, God's not sorry that He called us, even in no. our imperfections. Right. He, now, us as the vessel. Yeah, we need to. There's something that we have to do, but even while you're standing up there um, ministering, and you you've been up all night, and you 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 toiled, and you you know God still, and you're you're even trying to figure it out. A lot of times, you're trying to figure out now what the hell, mm-hmm. okay. and you're saying God still work, and you get more confused because like now oh, I just there's got to be something better than this. Yeah, like this can't be the end. Like y'all been doing this. I used to look over at, 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 at the people, you know, who had been in the church and I was still in my early twenties at this time. And they had been, they were 60. Y'all been doing this all. And y'all, how did y'all been running for Jesus a long time? I ain't tired. Is this the running? Cause I'm tired and I ain't been here but 25 years on earth. And there's gotta be something better than this. Cause I'm missing this whole point. Yeah. Cause okay. this, this ain't we're, right. gonna, we're gonna keep calling out the same devil and the same people. No, but now, they got, but now they got all the good little fancy names for it now. Don't get me started. You know, Please we, don't. Because yeah, I'm tired of I said, yeah. You know, d- just anything. Now, I grew up where anything was a demon. All of it is a demon. Any, Anything. Sleepy demon. A demon of, of, of fatigue. Uh, an eating demon. You had, Now, they may be disorders. Right. I just a demon. But I mean, just, you know, you got a smacking, a smiling demon. I had a smiling demon. I'm not lying to you. That came over to me. That smile is not of God. That's a demon. And God's going to wipe that. When I tell you, I wish you could have been in my church. My, my church is a book. Because I'm only telling you the small things. I wish, I wish God's going to wipe that smile off your face. And I couldn't do nothing. But at that time, it only makes me smile bigger. So it's like, oh my God, it is a demon because I can't stop. Ah! You know, but I mean, it was a demon. You better get that smiling demon of smoke. Oh, yes, it was a smiling demon. I said, now, beloved, <laughs> if it's a demon, I welcome it. Because, I mean, how you trying to steal my joy? I'm bu- no, I mean, and because you think actually, because it wasn't about joy. It was the fact the fact that they were doing foolery, and I was laughing at them. I would have laughed too. That is part. You of what I'm saying? So they got upset, and it all <laughs> now it's a demon. You, you know, know, I had an argumentative demon. I had because I just didn't accept. The, my pastor said that there were some people that you're just not going to be able to work with. I was I was confused. I raised my hand and said, "So do you mean that?" The Holy Ghost that I have that can save me from hell, deliver me from all these different type of demons, can't, can't make me able to work with somebody. I'm saying that, the answer was yes. And so my cousin raised her hand. So you're telling me that corporate lawyers who hate each other, don't believe in God, are atheists, can come together for a point to work for a greater good, but the Christian believer can't? There are just some things. I said, well, Pastor, maybe you need to take another dip. Now, <laughs> it happened without, I mean, but, but my mom was like, that's impossible. And you make this God, God stupid. If you're telling me that somebody who don't even believe in him can do what you with almighty God. 
can't do. Right. You ain't met him. I, and I don't care what you And at that time, all, yeah. You ain't met him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You let have to make that clear. Let me introduce you because I refuse to believe that he's handicapped, that your own emotions. And I, I'm, I, in that moment, I suspended your title because you're talking to me, just talking to me. In my mind, I don't care about you being no pastor. Title suspended. Mm -hmm. I don't care nothing about that. Didn't mean I don't care. Why can't you be wrong? And that has always been my thing because I grew up where pastors were voices of God only, and only. everything they said was law. Everything. And I saw as a child, this is a lie. And of course, I saw. I got my mother smacked me across my face many a days because I couldn't help it. When I saw it, I got to tell you. Mama. Pastor just lied. That's a lie. And I said it right where he said it, which was in church on Sunday morning in the pew. So she had to slap me because it was a demonstration to everybody else that she wouldn't just allow me to. <laughs> but when I got grown, you just, you were shaming me. You were telling the truth. I knew it and everybody knew it around, but you, you just can't call it out. I'm going I, to call it out. Yeah, I had no, I didn't know. I hadn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. So. Because I done sat there plenty of, you know, I never forget one day, me and my dad, we were driving in a car. And I laugh at this now, although I probably didn't think it was funny then, but I laugh at it now, right? Because he was like, mm -hmm. Kia, are you really telling me that you believe that Jonah was swallowed by a whale? Like, and my dad was dead serious because we was literally driving. He was driving because th that's how we talk. Uh -huh. I said, well, daddy, the Bible does not say it was a whale. It just says a big fish. He said, Kia, in all the common sense that you have, are you telling me? I said, daddy, the Bible uses a lot of symbolism in order to make a point. Mm -hmm. I said, now, do I believe he was swallowed by a big fish? No, I said, but what I am going to tell you is that the symbolism of the big fish is important to the believer. I said, but there are those who do believe he was swallowed by a big fish. He sure. said, well, I am happy to see that you're still able to analyze and think. Right. For right. yourself. Which would have been against the church. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things, so one of the things that I did, I'm going to tell you no lie. One of the things that I did, a lot of the things that I was taught that I actually just truly did not believe, I just didn't say nothing about it. I just knew it was, I just knew that it didn't make sense, right? And then I took like a couple of seminary classes that began to break down some of these things and answer the questions that I always had in my mind, which was, Lord, is Job a real person? Mm -hmm. I always questioned that because of what took all of the symbolism in the entire book of Job. I right. always questioned that. So it took me literally having to go through the study of the book of Job mm -hmm. to come to my answer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying for the world of y'all who believe Job is a real person, I'm not telling you not to believe that. I'm just telling you I had questions concerning all of yeah. that. You're saying your journey. My journey. Yeah. Then I had another good journey on Lazarus, right? Mm-hmm. There are two Lazarus mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Lord, are these the same people or are they two different people? Mm -hmm. And I began to study that and I began to question that because I wanted to understand the order in which things were written. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when we absolve ourselves of the ability to ask questions, not to man, but to God. We literally, it's like we are literally taking away our ability to hear from God directly. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, nah, God, I got, run me this knowledge real quick. Because you told me all I need to do is ask you for wisdom. And wisdom is applied knowledge. So therefore, Correct. I need knowledge, right? Correct. In order to gain this wisdom so I can know how to apply it. That's it. That that was it for me. And when the Lord began to truly open my eyes and say, daughter, I need you to see how I see. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. How in the world can I say God hates you? Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's what we teach people. That's well, correct. He doesn't hate you. He hates the sin. Mm -hmm. Where's that at in the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible is very clear on what he actually hates and detests when we truly study uh, the Proverbs chapter mm -hmm. 6. Yeah. It is very clear. And what he was demonstrating, truth be told, was morality, characters, yeah, integrity. Mm -hmm. It was your character. Yeah, it characters. had nothing to do with actual sin. It was the character, the nature of who you are. The right? essence, yeah, that, that, correct. That right there. So yeah. I'm like, why do we always perpetuate this foolishness? Because we don't fully comprehend what we are reading. Listen, like I told people, and again, I, go yeah, ahead. Again, I think it also goes back very reminiscent, very close to now. My, I may have to switch to my my desktop because I see my phone is winding down in my uh, uh, ability to stay afloat. But um, mm -hmm. very akin to what what the masses taught us to hate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because we were given these parts of the Bible, and I'm not I, I'm not a an African anthropologist and all of that, so I don't have all I can't you know. But I have done enough work mm -hmm. to know that the parts that they gave us were the parts to make sure that we hated ourselves and to, that we were obedient to them. So these are the parts that we found that in ourselves there was no good in us, that God did hate us, because we can't be valuable to God, but not valuable to man, right? We have to find a way to leverage that, the white man I'm saying, had to find a way to leverage that you are less than me. Well, they had to, because yeah. in order to keep us in bondage, we had we to. We have to believe. find that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I, you know, it's a part of that, but we perpetuated it. And until we stand up, and, and unfortunately, there's so many that were the old you, which just didn't say anything. And you found out who they were because you would go to them, old mothers and stuff, who, who did know better. And you would say, now, what is the love? Baby, you just got to know God for yourself. That was the, the telltale sign that you know that ain't that don't make no sense. And no, I'm not following that. But I don't stand up and disagree. And I'm not going to sit but. Just know God for yourself, baby. That was always the go-to when they knew it wasn't right. Yep. And I mean, like they were putting, I mean, all the way to the tune of how they used to put, they used to have women who got pregnant, girls who got pregnant and make them stand up. Stand up. And confess. Now, let me tell you, there was this happened at my old church and they said that they could not have, because the old folks, or old school, not only did they, okay, so if you got pregnant out of wedlock, they couldn't throw you the a baby, baby shower, shower. Right. Um, they would still buy you. They would get you, stuff. they would get you, yes, they would. But they you would could not have a baby but, shower. But there will not be a celebration yep. of sin. Of sin. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you had to stand and um, apologize. To and the then you church. had to, get, yeah. And then you had to be seated throughout pregnancy and I think maybe six months after. Whatever. So I challenged them. I said, now I just don't see how that makes sense. I said, now, mind you, I'm all for you shouldn't do it, right? That shouldn't, okay. But if we're saying that the woman who got caught in adultery, who was brought before Jesus and said that what we, our tradition of what we should do from Moses says, take her to the edge, stone her, all that, right? Stone her, yep. But Jesus said, he without sin cast the first stone. And when he saw that there was no body, none of her accusers remained, he didn't put her on a six month probation. He told her. So how did the church get greater than Jesus? He told, but wait, but he first told her, look up. Look up and see, I want you to witness what I just did for you. I want you to witness what redemption is. And go your way and sin no more. Yeah, just don't do that no more. That was silly. Don't do that. Be better. Right? Do better, please. Go on. Go back to what you have. Go, do your business, but don't sin. How do we get the authority then above Jesus to say, 
Okay, you're forgiven, but you need to have a seat. Oh, they didn't like me. I don't care. Find me a scripture. You say you scripture. You say you love God. You say it's Bible based. Based it's on the Bible. Find me. Well, I don't. I, it's not about what you think. I tell what you told me. You lose your mind to get Christ's mind. Now find me Christ that told him to sit down and have six months. Six months. So they 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 reverted. <laughs> they didn't really like me because I didn't mind. Questioning openly. Because I didn't care. Like this just is dumb. I was already halfway over church when I got there, which helped me be able to be like, what you gonna do with me? Nothing. Uh, you know, I mean, and it's fine. You know, I got rebuked all the time, and that was fine. I, I, I had to roll around the floor many a times, and that was fine. But I'm going to say what I got to say when I stand back up. Hello. <laughs> I, still, I still said what I said. I still meant that. I did, and if he changed my mind while I'm on the floor, I'll stand up and tell you that, too. You know, I was, I mean, because right. I was wrong. I've had wrong. I've, I've been, I have been argumentative. I have been, because I was bitter. I was hurting. I was trying to find my place of healing. So, but they were willing to work with me. But as we work, we're going we gonna to get healed together. You didn't, together. Even know, you didn't even know you were hurting. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to rip this bandage off of you and, and put a little alcohol in you. Be like, ah, yep, hurt. <laughs> See it? <laughs> now. Deal with that. Right. Now, let's pray together. So, you know, it, you know, I think that we all, we all have, and a lot of times we can find ourselves back in that same syndrome. We can. It's because it's easy. It's easier to go with the flow than to go against it. And I have learned how to go against it at this point. I don't care. Uh, I I can't care about the opinions of, 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 of men when the truth of the matter is the only one that's going to judge me is God mm -hmm. on that day. Now, he does give those, you know, you know oh, the Bible says you could judge righteously. Yeah, but I got to see your heart first. So at the end of the day, oh. you want to hide behind that scripture. <laughs> In the good, what was it? In first John, one of them, James. Uh, it John, isn't mm -hmm. John? Judge not that you be not judged. Uh huh. And then I think it's in one of those other ones. One, it might be in one of those first Johns or one of them, James is one of those, one of the J's where uh -huh. it, it tells us that we are to judge righteously. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. But in order for you to do that, your heart has to be in the condition that it needs to be. And if your heart is still in condemnation, you are not a righteous judge, period. But you know, righteously is funny. Because righteously is not stagnant. Righteously is not black and white. Righteously it is. is situational. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it righteous. Because I can say that you got to have...